The history of trapping dates back to the earliest days of mankind. Over the course of thousands of years, trapping fur bears has played a vital role in the development of this great country. A warm and renewable resource that's still utilized today, these are the memories from my days enjoying this time-honored tradition. These are the stories from the trap line. All right, so I'm back to this set again where I had the mink the other day come up and steal my bait. Unfortunately, I had uh, the set iced over. So after a couple of real cold nights, I ended up just putting it up about halfway up the bank and uh, concealing my trap really well and uh, just kind of guided them in there with a few uh, logs and well-placed rocks. And uh, it worked. He snuck right in there, got in the trap, Usually, when they get their foot in the trap, they'll dive right down into the water, and that's what he did. So, here he is. I can just see uh, a little bit of the back end of him sticking up out of the water. So, I'm going to go check him out. I have my trap right up here. A little bit of a shelf I created. Oh, look at that. I had them wired up. It's not very deep out here, but just to, deep enough to uh, to get them out there in the water. Look at that! I got this little single spring Victor. Both both front feet. And there we have it. Nice little male mink. So I got this little one and a half Victor here. Here's where my my pocket is my hole. Stuff that full of bait. And the last time he came in and I didn't catch him because it was iced over, he ended up coming down the riverbank and he used this as a little uh, stepping pad right here. So I had this trap, set it right here, made a little bit of a shelf, kind of made a shelf there with my foot and uh, just covered up with a few leaves and grass and, and uh, yeah, it worked. Kind of positioned to few rocks around here, a few sticks to try to get him to commit to stepping down in there and when he did he went both feet down and caught both both feet in the trap. So well, I, I forgot my gloves. You should always wear <laughs> gloves when you're setting traps especially if they're going to be on dry land but uh, I'm not going back to get them so I'm going to go ahead and set it anyway. Set it nice and light. see the camera. So there he is. Nice little male. A little on the small side for a male. That's already does have uh, a lot of the white under his under his chin and between his front legs. Nice and dark isn't he? Look at how dark he is. Yeah. So soft. Nice huh? Mm -hmm. 
What do you think? Should we tan him too? Uh-huh. It looked nice with that pine martin we got a couple weeks ago, won't it? I think we will. Nice, huh? Fresh fisher tracks from this morning. Had uh, pine martin tracks this morning on my coyote bait. Uh, it's only a less than a quarter mile away. Those are about, uh, oh, they're probably two and a half inches in diameter. You can see the backs and then they kind of wing out in the front where they got dumb to toes and and uh, claws in the front. A little bit of snow over them, but. See how they're running? Sets of two, they don't, they don't run so much, they just kind of hop along. They're spread out about a foot apart. All right, so here I am again this morning, just a few days after I caught that nice little male mink in that pocket set over along the river bottom here. Uh, before I caught that one, I set two 110 conna bears over along the river bank. Just the uh, traps that would keep operating if the other ones happened to freeze in. And I got them concealed really well. Checked the one this morning, there was a nice mink in it. So let's take a look. I already went ahead and pulled this nice little female mink out of here. And reset my 110. Just a little hole in there along the bank. And it did the job. Check this one out. Good sized female. Look at all that white. White, big white patch right under her chin. Extends right down between her front legs and uh, nice patch back here on her belly. Beautiful little mink. I just finished skinning out my mink I got this morning. I think it turned out pretty good. Got a lot of white on her. There's the uh, male I got earlier in the week. And there's my son's first squirrel there, a big old gray squirrel. So we're doing a little project with that. We got him skinned out and fleshed and got it uh, stretched out and on salt. So he gets home from school, we're probably going to scrape that off, salt on him again, and take it from there. I'm up at the house, just picked up the kids from school, and we uh, we're in the start of this big winter storm and I just happened to look out the window and there's a mink bouncing around on the shore. Looks like I got him in the trap. At least I think it's a mink. It looks dark and about the right size, but uh, take a look. He's there. Whatever it is, it's got to be a mink. If it is, that'd be number three in the last week or so. I had to move my trap just up on shore just a little bit to keep it from freezing up. And uh, he's supposed to grab it and dive out in the, in the water there, but he must have just got in it. Got it all tore up up here. All right, crossing the water. Oh, nice day, huh? Nice day for the critters to be moving. Looks like the water's a little high. I might, uh, I might go over my boots here. <laughs> oh well.
Look at that. Another mink. Unbelievable. Wow. So there we have it. Number three in this spot. Another little female. Literally right out my back door. Here's the river and next year I'm going to stock up on traps and uh, go up and down this river a bit. I know, know a few spots I can get to so next year will be better. But I'd say that's pretty good in, in a week in this one spot. So check her out. Nice female. Thanks for watching. See you next time. See you next time. See you <laughs> next time. See you next time. <laughs>